Hi, I'm Deborah Henson Conant, harping on the good things in life, like an email I got just yesterday from a harpist named Chris in Montana. It was actually a cry for help. Chris just received some sheet music two days ago that she has to play at her school's graduation on Friday. Chris told me that she's only had about two years of harp lessons, and that was two years ago. She told me that she was able to play the right hand of the music, but she's having a really hard time putting it together with the left hand. She also told me that a piano player had offered to help accompany her. But she didn't know what to do, so I asked her to send me the sheet music. It was for Handel's Largo. Then I made this little video for her to show her how she can not only make it simpler, but make it much more creative so that she can not only play for those graduates on Friday, but she can really have fun doing it. So happy that you sent me this problem because this is exactly what I will be going over in my class, my online class, Arrange Yourself. This is a perfect problem that people have, that you've got a piece that's far too long, you don't have time to learn the whole thing, but you have to play it for a certain amount of time, and you would like to ha have more fun with it and be more creative. So we're talking about Handel's Largo, and my suggestion to you is to do a couple of things. The first is to cut it down to size. There is a, a logic in this piece that ends right at measure 15. So there's a cadence. Let me turn up my, my amp just a little bit here so that you can hear me. So from measure 14 to 15, uh, it goes like this. So that's like an ending. So I'm just going to suggest that you end there and go back to the beginning. And, and just keep playing that over and over and over again. Each time you can play it slightly differently. That's one thing that you can do if you don't have to play for a long period of time. So that's the first thought is that you can shorten the piece and repeat it, especially if you find a place where you can turn around. Now here's two tricks that you can use to make that turnaround more fun and um, more harpistic. Okay, first of all, we're in the key of G, so we've got a, uh, an F sharp and everything else is, uh, is natural. So in the key of G, D is your dominant. So that's what I'm going to use as the introduction, because it's going to introduce everybody and get them settled and have them knowing I'm just about to play something. On a lever harp, I'm not even going to try to set it up in, in your standard glissando. I'm just going to leave it in the key, play the D in the bass, because that's the dominant, and then I can gliss however I want. And if I think people are forgetting the sound, I can play that D again. I can play it up here. When I'm ready, I can play the piece. One moment, please, while I answer the phone. Okay, I'm back. All right, so that was the first thing. Is to, Oh, oh, but there's a second part of that. So the first is to put that glissando on the beginning. And then when you're ready... get to measure 14 and then you gliss again and you play it again but the second time you play it up an octave and then when you get to measure 14 uh, let's see what would that look like um, and then you come down and you play it down an octave where you started it sounds like it sounds like you're coming to a new place so that's one way that you can play the piece three times, just exactly the same thing, those first 15 measures, and get a lot more mileage out of it. Then there's something that I w would suggest that I would do, although it depends. If you're playing for music school, I probably wouldn't. I might leave out measures 12 and 13. Those are the tricky measures. Those are the ones where you have to change a lever. And don't let any, but don't tell anybody I said this to you. But I might do it. So you'd go from measure 11, <laughs> if I could play it, and straight to measure 14, instead of what's written, which I'll have trouble playing. Um, those two 
two measures out to make it to make it simpler. And of course, we've already talked about the fact that you could only play the right hand and have the piano player play the left hand. And when you play the right hand, there's so many things you can do to simplify it. You can just play it as written. Or if that is giving you trouble, you can even just play. Um, although I don't think you'll have trouble with this, another really, really fun thing to do when you're playing with somebody else, a cellist or a pianist, is you can double that hand, and it's so much easier than playing a right hand and a different kind of left hand. So you could go, and he's playing, dun, dun, dun. So you're playing the same thing with your right and left hand. That's one thing you can do. So now there's a fun and creative thing that you can do. And this is to create an interlude. The interlude will go in between different times that you play those 15 or 16 bars or whatever the melody is that you're gonna play. And the interlude in this piece, similar to that bliss, is gonna be all based on that D as a pedal tone. So what I'm gonna do here, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do first and then I'll do it so you can see it. Everything that I do with my right hand is going to be based on one physical shape. And that physical shape, if I is, is well, I'm just going to say that the notes. So this is an F sharp with my thumb, a C, and an A. That shape, I'm going to keep that shape all the time. So I'm going to go up, or I can go very slow, or if I was doing it with both hands. This is the kind of thing you can do without even looking because your hand is always the same shape as long as that pedal tone is here, that D in the bass. So watch all the things that I can do, and knowing that I'm keeping that same shape with my hands, and just creating a gesture. So I've come to the end of this. Now is my interlude. Here's a simple one. simple one. Here's one that's a little more complicated, still using that shape with my right hand. So again, measure 14. Whoops. Oh. D in the bass. D in the bass. dominant and that dominant is D and you're going to play that note as the pedal tone you're going to use that shape with your right hand that you make a cookie cutter chord and move it and you notice that that's moving up and giving a sense of lift to what you're doing so that when you come back to the melody it feels like a new arrival and a new place to be this is such a fun and creative thing to do with music and with a problem like yours where you have so little time to learn what's written on the page and so you can not learn what's written on the page but in fact take a part of that and then be creative with it by building an interlude or building an arrangement and that's I'm so glad that you sent me this problem because this is exactly what my course Arrange Yourself is about. So you are telling me that in fact this is something that people really need. So thank you and I hope you enjoyed this.